and it, at the top of the cliff, you know, so many years ago on the red box of St. George, if I knew then what I know now, I would have jumped anyway just to get to where I am. Okay, I'm Meg Johnson and I am a motivational speaker and author and I have a YouTube channel and a podcast and and when I was 22 years old I was hiking in St. George, Utah with a friend of mine and we were on this little red rock path and at one point the little path forked and he went one way to go watch some rock climbers, you know, just do their thing and I went the other way because there are all these boulders all in a row and they weren't up high, they were set really low in the ground and so, and there were lots of them all squished together in this one area and I was jumping on the tops of these boulders, jumping from one boulder to another boulder to another boulder until I saw this one last boulder and I jumped for it but on accident I just jumped off a cliff and so I fell, um, it was about 45 feet, where they think I landed on hands and knees on the ground because I broke both of my arms and both of my legs and my collarbone and then four bones in my neck and they life-lighted me to LDS Hospital in Salt Lake City where I was pronounced a quadriplegic, paralyzed from the chest down without the use of my hands. I was 22, young single adult, paralyzed, newly paralyzed, and it just was so hard. My mom would wake me up. Well. My mom would get me up and she would dress me and then she would brush my teeth and then she would feed me breakfast or you know in whatever order and, and then she would take me and she would push me onto the back porch um, of our house and that's where I stayed day after day after day. Sitting there on the back porch watching the grass grow and I remembered um, hearing one doctor tell another doctor Sometimes the doctors talk to each other and they think you're like unconscious. <laughs> and so one doctor is talking to another doctor and he said the worst thing that you can do to somebody is to take away their work um, because then they can't stop to rest or some variation of that, this, this doctor said. And I remembered hearing that as I was sitting there on the back porch, you know, and I was like, that's true, I need something to do. Like, I need to do something. There's nobody who can come over here and save me because the person who's keeping me down is myself. And when it comes to me keeping me down like I am as strong as my opponent and I can't outwit them like it's me and I'm the one I'm the only one that I have to be stronger than and so I, I asked my mom if she could push me down to a local elementary school which is really close to our house I mean not even a block away but I couldn't push there myself and so she pushed me down to the local elementary school and, and I asked the principal there if there was anywhere that I could volunteer in. and um, she put me with Mrs. Smith's second grade class and in Mrs. Smith's second grade class, I sat outside the door with a little chair next to me and kids would come out one at a time and they'd read me their library book. And I was their cheerleader. I'd be like, oh, you're doing such a good job. I really like that book. That was a big word. I mean, that's all I was doing. And then when they were done, they I had a little clipboard on my lap. And so they would get up and they would check off their name off a clipboard uh, because I didn't know how to use a pencil. And then they would go back into the classroom and they would call for the next student, for the next student to come out and sit with me because I wasn't strong enough with my lungs to speak that loud. And that's all I was doing. Like, that's all I did. I just sat in the hallway doing this. And I know that, like, my little service there was so small and I probably could have been replaced with a little sticker that said, Good job. Um, but it was so liberating to me. Um, that I still had something to give somebody else and I didn't need my legs and I didn't need my my hands and I didn't need to be able to stand up like I was still useful and um, another another feeling that I started to feel after that is beautiful um, and that was kind of surprising because I hadn't felt beautiful from a wheelchair but this little act of service um, let me feel useful and beautiful and there's a quote a person starts to live when he can live outside himself and from that tiny little act of service that was so tiny one class um, that's exactly what happened to me as I started to live and bloom and blossom in my life um, and really learn to recognize that even though I couldn't walk and even though I couldn't stand and even though I couldn't use my hands and even though I wasn't very powerful with my lung capacity I still had something to do and I still had something to offer and uh, me and my boyfriend at the time who's now my husband we started Miss Wheelchair Utah um, and Miss Wheelchair Utah had been around before but it had kind of disintegrated back in the 80s so we revived it Miss Wheelchair Utah and we 
are now. We just had our eighth pageant. We're the largest pageant in the nation, the largest wheelchair pageant in the nation. Um, our audience is bigger than the national pageant, and we, we just have such a fun time. I think the thing that um, that I would share and that I do share most with people who are going through a hard time is um, one, to love the things around you, whether or not you think they're worthy of love, um, because it's so liberating just to do that. And then the second thing I would tell anybody who's having a hard time is to serve somebody else. Um, not because they need it, if they do or if they don't, it doesn't matter. That's not why you know we go and we serve somebody else. Uh, it's because it makes us, me and you and anybody, feel so good. And I don't know why. I don't. I don't know why. I'm not an intellectual. I just am a person who knows that secret, that serving somebody else makes us feel good. And that's how I move forward. And that's how anybody can. I think.